Hi, I am Dr. Banerjee, shoulder surgeon. I am head of the shoulder and upper limb division, Sakra World Hospital. Fractures and dislocations around the shoulder joint. I'll try to explain on this model. This is the model of the shoulder joint. This is an arm bone called the humerus. This is the collar bone called the clavicle. And this is the shoulder blade called the scapula. So the fracture can happen with any of these bones. The most common fracture around the shoulder joint is fracture of the proximal humerus. This is called the proximal humerus. It can be broken into a single piece or it can be broken into multiple pieces. It is more common in patients who are aged and the bone is more porotic or the bone becomes weak. So in such patients there might be fracture of the greater tuberosity or a lesser tuberosity or it can be fracture of the neck of this bone. So these fractures play a vital role because they provide the attachment to important muscles surrounding the joint. So if this is untreated, the muscle will lose the function and it can go for suffering. So the other common injuries around the shoulder joint is the collarbone injuries. The collarbone can be broken in the middle part of it or it can be broken on the lateral end of the collarbone that is called the lateral end of the clavicle. So lateral end of the clavicle gives attachment to a muscle called the trapezius muscle which pulls the bone up. So the, many a times this fracture end tends to pop out beneath the skin. Such patients need a surgery where the bone is brought back into its place and it fixed either with the wires, screws or the plates. The shoulder blade fractures are not uncommon but they many a times go unrecognized or many a times they are left untreated. Shoulder blade provides attachment to many of the important muscles surrounding the shoulder joint which gives function to the shoulder joint. If the shoulder bone is broken, it tends to display into different directions because of the muscle attached into it. If they are not reduced into normal position, there can be limitation of the movements, there can be stiffness of the shoulder joint or the strength of these muscles will come down. The dislocation of the shoulder joint is one of the commonest conditions. The other common dislocation is dislocation of the acromioclavicular joint. This acromioclavicular joint provides attachment to ligaments surrounding the shoulder joint. If the ligaments are broken and if the capsule of the joint is broken, then the acromioclavicular joint tends to pop up. That is called the dislocation of the acromioclavicular joint. If reduced back and if held for a few weeks, this joint, this ligament tends to heal. So such patients where there is a complete dislocation of the acromioclavicular joint, they need an endoscopic surgery or it can be managed openly. So the open surgery carries with a bigger scar and restricted movements. The endoscopic surgery gives several advantages where the joint is brought back under vision. It is held with the threads which is passed endoscopically over the button. So this is called arthroscopic AC joint fixation surgery. Shoulder dislocation is a painful condition where the patient's shoulder comes out of the socket. So it needs to be brought back into the socket after putting the patient into anesthesia so that this process becomes less painful and less traumatic. Many a times the shoulder dislocations are being reduced in the field but it can lead to injury of the surrounding bone and the ligaments. So actually the patients with frequent dislocations or repeated dislocations of the shoulder joint needs a surgery called arthroscopy or a keyhole surgery where the patient the torn ligament which is the culprit for frequent dislocation is reduced back in its position so that the patient will have a stable shoulder. <laughs>